Welcome to the specialty basic free diving. You are about to embark on one of the greatest adventures of your life. Becoming a free diver marks the first step in a journey that will forever change the way you experience the oceans of our world. Today, more than ever, we continue our quest for adventure in this new world. We yearn to feel the weightlessness in water, to swim with the animals of the sea, and to admire the beauty of the ocean reefs. Free diving gives you the opportunity to explore the underwater world with minimum equipment and little training. By using air from the surface and your lung capacity, you can temporarily dive below the surface for a closer view. The first and most important piece of equipment for your comfort while freediving is a mask. Because the human eye is designed to function in air, not water, we must bring a pocket of air with us in order to see. This pocket of air is provided by a mask. In addition to covering the eyes, the mask also covers the nose in order to allow the diver to gently exhale while descending which stops the mask from squeezing against the face when diving below the surface. While masks all perform the same function, the quality of the mask will enhance the quality of your experience. High quality masks have lenses made of tempered or safety glass. The skirt is made of high grade silicone and masks also have nose or finger pockets for equalizing ear and sinus pressure. The strap should be adjustable and have a positive locking device. You might want to even look into a comfort strap so the strap doesn't pull your hair. The most important consideration with a mask is its fit. The entire mask skirt should touch your face evenly. Now inhale gently. With suction, you should be able to keep the mask in place without holding it. When you actually put the mask on your face, put it in place first and then pull the strap over your head. Be sure the strap rests comfortably on the crown of your head and that no hair is caught in the mask seal. The second piece of equipment to enhance your enjoyment in the water are fins. Fins allow the diver to move through the water with minimum effort, substantially increasing the power of the bare foot. Larger, heavier fins will provide more power, but require more strength when kicking. Smaller, more flexible fins provide less power, but are easier to maneuver with. The two basic styles are the full foot fin and the open heel fin. The full foot fin is usually worn over bare feet, while the open heel is worn with neoprene boots or booties. Booties provide added warmth, protection and comfort. And if you decide to become a diver, this is the type of fin you will want to push you and the equipment through the water. Fins also come in various sizes, but the open heel model is adjustable for a close, comfortable fit. Fins that are too tight will cause cramping, and loose-fitting fins may cause blisters or fall off while kicking. The next piece of equipment that will increase your enjoyment in the water is the snorkel. The snorkel allows you to swim and breathe on the surface while your face remains submerged. This position provides the diver with a relaxed and constant view of the beauty below. There are three important considerations when selecting a snorkel.
the mouthpiece, barrel size, and whether or not it has a purge. A mouthpiece that does not fit well can be extremely uncomfortable, and a barrel that is too small makes it hard to breathe. A snorkel without a purge is much harder to clear. The mouthpiece and barrel size should be self-explanatory, but a purge is a different story. A purge works on the premise of a straw. When you go underwater, the barrel fills with water. When you return to the surface, if you have a purge, most of the water falls out of the purge, leaving you minimum water to clear from the snorkel. Try a number of snorkels until one feels right. When the snorkel is in your mouth, it should point nearly straight up when you are looking down. The snorkel is attached to the left side of the mask strap, allowing you to adjust the positioning of the snorkel. The piece of equipment for your warmth and comfort in the water is called an exposure suit. Water absorbs body heat 25 times faster than air, and a temperature that would be comfortable on land is uncomfortable in water. Exposure suits are designed to help stop body heat loss in water. The most common type of thermal protection is the neoprene wetsuit. Neoprene comes in various thicknesses, from 1.5 millimeters to 7 millimeters. The thicker the suit, the more protection you will have in cooler water. Wetsuits also come in a variety of styles. One-piece jumpsuits are comfortable, while two-piece suits can be layered or worn separately. In colder water, a hood and gloves can be added for extra warmth. The most important feature in a wetsuit is fit. Your suit should fit like a second skin, long enough in the arms, legs and body, not binding in the underarms or crotch. Wetsuits are made of closed cell neoprene and will make you float. This is called positive buoyancy. By using a weight belt, you can make yourself neutrally buoyant. When adjusting the weight belt, make sure the weights are evenly distributed on your hips and slightly forward for balance. The belt should be clamped tightly to avoid the possibility of falling off underwater. The other piece of equipment in the buoyancy puzzle is the safety vest or buoyancy compensator, BC. When free diving, a front mount vest, safety vest, is adequate. With an oral inflator, it can support weight on the surface and can be easily deflated for making surface dives. Now that we have learned about all the pieces of equipment, we will begin your free diving experience by putting on and adjusting your equipment. The first piece of equipment you put on is your exposure suit. Adjust the suit around your ankles and then slowly roll it up. When you put on the top half, adjust the suit around your wrist, one arm at a time, and then slowly pull it on. Now, put on your safety vest by slipping it over your head and adjusting the straps accordingly. If you are going to wear weights, now is the time to put them on and adjust them over your hips and waist. Next, apply defog solution to your mask. This will keep the mask from fogging due to the difference between your body and water temperature. Rinse gently and place the mask on your face and adjust the snorkel to fit. Last are your fins. In a sitting position, put on one fin and then the other. Once your equipment is on and properly adjusted, you are ready to enter the water. The environmental conditions for the area will dictate how you enter the water. The controlled seated entry is the safest and easiest method and should be used when conditions allow it. 
When entering off a diving platform, the step-in entry, or giant stride, works best. All you do is simply step into the water. Always enter with air in your safety vest, while holding your mask and snorkel in place. This way, you will be able to see, breathe and float the minute you enter the water. As we discussed, the best snorkel for free diving is one with a self-draining purge. To clear a snorkel, the purge and popping method works well. Quick, forceful exhalation will cause the water to pop out. Another method is called displacement. As you approach the surface, tilt your head back so that the tube is pointing down. By exhaling a small puff of air on ascent, the air will expand, forcing the water out. As stated earlier, fins allow the diver to swim through the water with a relaxed, even pace. By learning various fin kicks, divers can switch from one method to another as they tire. The flutter kick is the standard kick. Keep your legs elongated, kicking from the hips and ankles, not the knees. To do the dolphin kick, Keep both legs together while moving in a wave-like motion through the water. In order to explore the beauty below, you must learn to descend below the surface. The weight belt makes it easier to descend. One method of descent is the head-first surface dive. By bending at the waist and lifting your legs to a vertical position, you can let the weight of your legs help force you below the surface. Once you are underwater, you can kick to a deeper depth. The feet first dive can be used in confined areas. Start in a vertical position and use the force of your arms and legs to propel you below the water. Once you are underwater, tuck, roll forward and swim down. As you descend, you will feel pressure in your ears. This is caused by increasing pressure. To relieve this pressure, simply hold your nose and gently blow. This will equalize the pressure. If pain occurs, do not continue to descend. Instead, ascend and try to equalize again. When it's time to ascend, there are a few safety rules to follow. As you surface, look up Once you reach the surface, leave your mask in place and orally inflate your vest so you can float without the need to kick in the water. Now that we have covered the free diving skills, let's take a look at the ocean, the world's most beautiful and powerful free diving environment. Tides, currents, waves and surf all have some effect on free divers and need to be understood in order to make free diving safer and alleviate any natural fears. Tidal currents are of more interest to free divers than the tides themselves. The currents cause water movement toward and away from shore, which affects entries and exits and causes resistance for anyone swimming in the opposite direction. Also of interest to free divers are the actions of waves and localized currents. How large the wave grows depends on how long and hard the wind blows and how far the wave travels uninterrupted by land. When traveling in open water, you will notice that the rise and fall of a boat has a certain rhythm. Waves only affect the surface of the water to a relatively shallow depth. They will usually only affect free divers on entries and exits. When entering from shore, the primary concern is to avoid being knocked down by waves in the surf zone. Walk into the water until you are about waist deep. Then, using your buddy for assistance, put your fins on. Submerge and swim out under the surf line. Free divers should be aware of localized currents when planning entries and exits from shore. Localized currents are usually one of two types. 
Longshore currents are created when waves come onshore along a stretch of straight beach line. Rip currents are really a backwash of the waves as their energy is expended onshore. As the water moves back out of the sea after striking land, the current is created. Always be aware of the local water conditions before free diving. Consult the local dive center or resort for more information. Depending on where you free dive, the life forms you will see can be quite different. However, the greatest concentration of life will always be where the food chain is most developed. In the warmer waters of the ocean, life centers on coral reefs. Despite their rock-like appearance, corals are very much alive. The hard exterior is home and protection for the animals that live within. Free divers must be very careful not to damage the coral reefs. Corals grow very slowly and are quite fragile. A touch of a hand or brush of a fin can damage this beautiful structure. There are many varieties of corals, both soft and hard. While free diving on a reef, you are likely to encounter some of the more common inhabitants. It is never a good idea to touch or feed marine animals. If you respect the ocean and its life forms by not touching anything, you will avoid injury to yourself and the animal life around you. Remember, the ocean is more beautiful left in its natural state, so avoid collecting shells and corals. In fact, many free diving parks are protected by local laws from any collecting. The underwater world and its creatures are the most fascinating aspect of free diving. It is what we all come to see and enjoy. When you are tired, cold, or ready to stop, it is time to exit. Use the safest method for your conditions. Your dive doesn't end when you are out of the water. There are a few steps to wrapping up your dive that should be followed. You should rinse your equipment in fresh, clean water as soon as possible. Sand, salt, mud, and debris can damage your equipment. Your mask, fins, and snorkel are easily cared for, only requiring a rinse or soak in fresh water. Your free diving day is not over until you have logged your dives. Your free diving log is a valuable reminder of all your free diving memories you can keep track of the fish you saw, the people you met, and all the adventures you have experienced. Free diving is an exciting sport that anyone, young or old, can enjoy. Swimming underwater can be a great year-round activity, no matter where you live. From exploring the beautiful ocean reefs to discovering your local lake or river, there is a free diving experience near you.